Hello and welcome to episode 10. Today we're already on Minmus, so we're going to be hopping around quite a bit. Now when we visit each biome as the highlands, which we are currently at, the plan is to gather all of the science we can. That way, when we actually send a rescue craft to return and bring all of the science from both of these landers back, then we will get a huge amount of it. And between both landers, it's probably between going to be between 3,000 and 4,000 science, but I'm not 100% sure on that. It might be less, uh, but I'm pretty sure we'll hit about 3,000 in the middle because each biome is going to give us around five to 600 and we're visiting six or seven biomes between the two landers. And if you looked right there, this is just why a small lander works so well on Minmus because literally the force of my Kerbal standing up, Bob here standing up from having fallen over, is enough to launch this thing into quite a high hop. Now I'm actually just repositioning this thing trying to get a screenshot of Kerbin, but Minmus is rotating the wrong way. So unfortunately Kerbin is going below the planet rather than up into the horizon. So unfortunately there's no cool screenshot there. Alright, so I've got the biome page back up because I'm actually looking where I want to go next. And honestly what it looks like is I want to go to the s South Pole. Because one, it's much closer than this uh, greenish area, this flatlands. And two, there's about a 50% chance that when I actually go there, I'll hit the pink area, which I want to say are the slopes. So by going to the pink area, which are the slopes, uh, I might grab that science instead, which means it'll be easier to get it there than having to get it elsewhere. Uh, basically, so I'm going to head south for my next place. Now, unfortunately, Min Miss rotates the wrong way. I had repositioned this a little bit, and I was going to just do this purely awesome screenshot of Kerbin rising over here, and then Minmus rotated the wrong way, so that was completely shot. Now it looks like I'm missing a fuel line, or not necessarily missing it, but I think the fuel line um, is right there, and it's actually connecting to the wrong thing. So what I'm going to do before we actually, because I, I do not want to have to do this in flight, I'm going to start transferring some of the fuel, and I'm going to have to do this manually, apparently. So I'm just going to try and keep this balanced by, of course, only transferring the right side of the fuel down to the right tank and the left to the left tank. So think about that. With that entire landing and jumping around that we just did, all that burn time, which is a couple of minutes of consecutive burn time. We didn't even use one of these little tiny yellow rotate uh, toroidal fuel tanks. So to go to the South Pole, it's actually really easy. You simply go south. Much like how going to the North Pole you turn north, we're going to turn south. And we're just going to use our wicked low thrust to weight ratio to burn. Now, because we're on the highlands, if we burn up too much, it's actually really bad. Because once we get past this little ledge here, we're going to already be really high up compared to the rest of the ground. So we only need to burn up enough to not hit the ground, basically. So moving along a little bit faster, because this is a very slow process. With such a low thrust to weight ratio, there's really not a lot of exciting stuff going on. Now about this time, I do decide to, instead of going all the way to the South Pole, I decide to try and hit the slopes or the midlands along the way, which is why I start to slow down in a bit, because I want to hit this pinkish and light blue area. Mostly because I figured it'd be more efficient if I were to grab all the biomes along the way versus make a large hop and then have to do smaller hops later. So even though I'd already used a little more fuel than I needed to because um, I had planned to go to the South Pole, it should be fine because this lander does have plenty of Delta V. So I'm just gonna burn retrograde to make sure I'm slowed down or moving slow enough so that I don't crash. And eventually, after constantly burning, because it does take a bit of prediction to actually fly this thing since it does have low thrust to weight ratio. And I will be honest, I have actually crashed this thing. Now, with the first landing that we had when we touched down last episode, that was not the first landing that I actually had done. The first landing I'd actually done, uh, it went poorly. And if you can see, I've put it kind of in the corner there while we gather science from the Midlands, first off. And the landing, what happened was, basically, I didn't give myself enough time to react. So, if you'll notice, as we come into the Highlands, we're coming in much too quickly. 
which of course leads to crashing and not actual complete destruction as I was ex as I was expecting. It's actually surprising how the thing survived, and I proceeded to just point retrograde and use the landing legs to kind of cushion each fall each time I hit back against the surface of Minmus after having skipped a decent distance. And the landing legs perform surprisingly well in doing this. If you look, we just kind of hit it and we'd spin, but this action actually did slow down my velocity uh, to the point where I could actually land the thing, even though it was kind of silly. So if you find yourself in a predicament that's rather odd for Minmus, you can try and use your landing legs to cushion your fall, even if you're moving really fast. So it's not always the best idea for Minmus to just kind of give up. Now on the main screen, we did actually grab the slopes science as well, and now we're actually heading to the South Pole. But I do manage to land the small craft, I know I'm trying to commentate over kind of two images right now, and I begin to do something rather silly with that small craft. So while we head on to the South Pole, if you notice, I'm rolling the craft kind of at an angle. And it's surprising that I was able to actually move the thing doing this. I was getting probably around 4 to 5 meters per second of surface velocity. And even after a little while, I started to roll the thing as in kind of a somersault fashion, which worked much more effectively in actually getting me further. And it was just as equally as silly. If I would, if I was able to time it right, I could actually really kick off the surface of Minmus quite um, viciously and get a lot of speed, if you saw with that attempt right there. So it was kind of silly just rolling that thing around, and it was entertaining for about 20 minutes until the game crashed. Now, this is probably the only good landing that I'm actually able to do, where I successfully just very slowly and gently touch down on the surface, and compared to my other landings, that was probably the only good one that I'll actually do. And of course, we are at the South Pole, which means we're going to get our fourth biome worth of science from this one lander so far, since the lander has of course visited the Highlands, Midlands, Slopes, and now the South Pole, which is lots. And I'm just of course looking to see if I can see Kerbin from here, because possibly with the sun there it'd make a good... Uh, visual shot, but again, no luck on Minmus. Apparently this trip I just didn't find any good places to actually take a decent screenshot. So with all of the science collected, we are taking off towards the fifth and final biome that this lander will be visiting. Now the lander has enough fuel capacity to actually probably visit a sixth or possibly seventh biome if it was close enough. However, something goes a little unplanned with the descent of this. Now the biome is our first flats on Minmus, which is what Minmus is known for, are these huge flat beds where landing is incredibly easy for incredibly large craft, since it's perfectly flat, the there's no terrain. And that's the lighter green area, which it's really nice for setting up mining bases, since you can set up a very large complex without needing to worry about accidentally landing on the side of a mountain. So definitely for bases, surface bases, or even rovers just moving around for various uses, the flats are very good for doing that. Plus, since they're completely flat, it's very easy to land on for new landings. However, just like in the previous example that I showed, I didn't respect the fact that this lander has a very low thrust to weight ratio. Hence the foreshadowing I talked about in the previous episode where ultimately I decided to burn a little too late, and it ended up doing this. Now what's really strange is that the landing gear all survived, well, I think three of them broke actually, but what ultimately happened was I lost one engine and one fuel tank, that's pretty much it. Now because I have such high SAS, the engine being lost doesn't really do anything, and the legs don't actually matter all that much since landing was never that hard for this craft but it does prevent me from actually being able to fly. Now, I'm certain if I burned a little more fuel, I would have a 1.0 thrust to weight ratio with the one engine that I have left, and I would be able to take off. However, there's no real point, because since Bob did land on the flats, it's going to be very easy to rescue him, and this is probably going to be the place we're going to rescue him, since this craft was never designed to actually go back to Kerbin. Now, the bottom node below the Mark II lander can 
Actually, I could have put a heat shield, and then I could have returned this thing with maybe some parachutes on top as well. But that would have just added weight to this when I just wanted this thing to basically hop around all the biomes of Minmus. But we're going to actually go to the second lander with our other scientist and grab the last couple biomes that Bob wasn't able to, and then we'll rescue both of them and bring them home for our jackpot of science that we've been waiting for. Now we're here on our orbiting ship yet again, and it's still got, of course, the second lander, which is just a clone of the first one that we've been flying Bob around with. Now, Stalina is going to be piloting this one, of course, with the probe's SAS, but first we need to figure out the exact path we want to take here on Minmus. And because I know we've already gotten the green science, it only appears as though we have th four biomes that we haven't gone to yet. And those four biomes appear to be the light, light color, which is this almost white, but it's a very pale blue. Because we visited the dark blue, which was the Midlands, um, when we were over by this mountain. So we have this dark blue, we have this dark purple, we have the pale blue, and then we also have the red lake over here. And those are all the biomes we have. And we want to visit all of them. And I'm thinking, if I can do an orbit and I land at this purple area, I'll hop to blue, grab the pale, and then just over to red. And then I might even be able to make it over to green and land next to my other lander, because of course these landers do have plenty of delta-v. So at least that's my plan. Now, I didn't actually talk about this too much, because the last episode was a lot of um, speeding through and kind of post-editing, fast-forwarding. So we're actually going to talk about maneuver node landings, um, kind of now, since I've noticed I've strayed a little bit away from the tutorial kind of style that I wanted some of these videos to be like. Now, when you want to try and target where your landing is, it's probably best, especially, well, only if you have to do plane changes, to do it about at a 90 degree offset. So, what I mean by this is doing the burn right here, if we're going to land in this purple area, is probably a little early, just because of the way the arc would fall down. So, what we're actually going to do is we're going to bring it back, and then we're going to start turning this. And if you notice, when we start um, moving the purple one so that we lower our orbit down the anti-normal then our periapsis or our apoapsis actually goes up which means we also have to slow down but we also have to slow down so we have to grab this one and then slow ourselves down which in turn actually moves our position even more so you just have to tweak between the two of these until of course you manage to get the position that you want Now, of course, we want to land right on this purple area. So, our current path actually looks like it'd be perfect, since we're going to be flying over the purple area at a pretty low altitude, and of course, we need plenty of time to slow down. So, currently, as I can tell, this maneuver should be perfect. And it's going to cost us 134 units of Delta V, which shouldn't be too hard to actually get. Now, one thing to keep in mind about this craft here is the fact that it is very off-balanced. Now I want to do this burn so I can get my lander into kind of the drop-off position with this large craft, that way the lander's fuel is more preserved. But, because there's a lander on only one side, it's off, like I said, it's off-balance, which makes this a little bit more difficult. Now of course this craft is rather difficult to control, and I have to only burn at a very low, um, thrust, because if I burn too fast, then the force will be greater than I'll actually be able to handle. So it does look like we're going to successfully go over the area we want to go over, which means we don't need this node anymore, and we can actually transfer our Kerbal. So Stalina is going to transfer over to the other lander, just going to confirm she's in there, and now we're going to undock this. So decouple node, and we're just going to very slightly burn away. And then of course to make sure that this, um, our main landing stage, which we're going to land probably over by Bob's craft, um, doesn't fall too deep into the atmosphere. We're just going to burn away from the planet. And then actually burn prograde. Because if you look at our orbit, 
Burning away from the planet since our apoapsis is in front of us isn't going to do anything for us. If your apoapsis is in front of you, you want to burn prograde to raise your periapsis. However, if your apoapsis is behind you and you're falling towards the planet, burning away from the planet is better. So it currently looks like we should be fine with where we're at, which means this vessel is safe to leave it as is and Valentina can land it later. Now what our focus should be is getting this one landed safely. So I'm going to activate my engines and of course rotate this just to kind of get it ready for actually landing. Skipping ahead a little bit because we've already seen this about a half dozen times of me landing, taking off, gathering, or landing, gathering science, and taking off. However, you'd think I'd learn with how much I talk about how this craft has such a low thrust to weight ratio. You'd think that the fact that I've mentioned that probably five or six times in the last couple episodes, I would actually learn how to land it by now. However, it appears as though I can't seem to learn that now in post-commentary realizing how much I actually have done this, just not actually landing these things properly. Maybe it would be beneficial to put uh, the larger engine in the middle instead of these 2.5 kilonewton engines, put the 15 kilonewton engine right in the center. It wouldn't be much less efficiency, it might actually be higher efficiency, however the engine itself would be much more massive than these two small ones. So it would maybe cut into the Delta V, but for how much I crash these things, I think it would be worth it. Now on the topic of repetition, we've already seen me take off and land at many biomes. So I'm going to just kind of speed along through the process of taking off and landing from the different uh, salt beds or salt flats or just flat terrain spots on Minmus where I gather all of the science. First, of course, we were at purple, then we visited the dark blue crater, and now I'm actually going to the lowlands, which was that pale blue zone. And of course, each time just landing, gathering all the science, taking our Kerbal out and resetting all the experiments, and then taking off and flying to the next biome. Of course, using the nice in-game kind of biome locator to help me figure out where they are. And of course we eventually get to the red one which is a bit further away. I keep transferring the fuel from the upper stages just like I had done with the first rocket so that I have plenty of fuel in my bottom two engines. And then we make our landing there and of course gather all the science just to take off again. And you can see why I'm kind of skipping through this because this would be incredibly boring to watch happen six times. Um, because each of these took about 10 to 15 minutes just to glide over Minmus since I didn't want to waste fuel, I wanted to be rather efficient. But now what we're actually doing is we're coming in to landing with our uh, other launcher, our other lander, where Bob is. And of course he's over there laying on his side because he accidentally crashed and broke some of one of his engines and a couple of his landing legs. Now if you look at what I'm doing with the nav ball here, is I'm actually trying to land as close as I can to my target. So what I had done was I had clicked on Bob's lander and I had targeted it and now I'm pushing my retrograde vector, which is what you can see me doing, I'm pushing it to face or at least be in line with my target, um, anti-target vector. So if you look, the reason I'm basically to the right of it on the nav ball is because I want to push my retrograde vector to the left. So to push it to the left I need to move my cursor to the right and by pushing it to the left it makes it in line with the anti-target which means I'm moving towards my target. Now of course this would help if I was actually in surface mode which I hadn't realized. I'm actually in orbit mode so I was having a little bit of difficulty trying to figure out why it wasn't 100% accurate. But in surface mode, that is how it would work. But anyway, just judging it by eye, I do eventually manage to lure myself into getting nice and close in the landing. Of course, I do have to make quite a few adjustments, but the lander does have sufficient delta V for it. And I am considering that if I ever bring more landers to Minmus, that I will probably bring a more powerful engine simply because these engines are really weak and 
just playing it incredibly safe because I don't want to crash this particular lander like I had crashed Bob's so I'm playing it extra cautious and of course once I get nice and low toward the surface I begin to just slowly move towards Bob's lander so that I can land right next to it and eventually have Valentina bring the science module all the way down here. So you can see we just gently land right next to Bob's ship just like that. So before we end the video we have one last thing to land and that would of course be the actual ship with the science module so that we can collect uh, or recover a ton of data and start converting it into science. Now I don't think we're actually going to at this point be holding a lot of the experiments down on the surface as to get full complete extraction of data but I think I'll just fill up the science module and then I'll send a rescue ship to come and actually recover all of the science since doing science, um, actual science with the science lab, is better for planets like Duna or Eve because they're so far away you actually um, can do a lot of the science um, in the duration of your traveling back and forth between them. Plus it helps you get actual science that you can send back without having to sacrifice some of the quantity of science you can gain by of course sending it whereas recovering it gives you full sending it gives you usually a percentage um, usually less than half on most experiments so we're gonna land this one very similar to the other ones I'm just burning so that I fly over my target and then once I'm over my target or I'm close to my target I actually slow down and then I burn towards the target and once I actually am right over the target where my anti-target is facing away from the planet, I arrest my horizontal velocity. What this does is it basically means I will fall straight down towards my target. And because they were directly facing the up vector, or away from the planet, then I'm going to fall down right on top of them and be nice and close so that my Kerbals can EVA and easily transfer between ships. But that is going to be the end of this episode. I thank you guys for watching. This is PTT GRW signing out. We'll actually recover the science next time and we'll see how much we got.